This is brought to you by the strange, the bizarre, the unusual. I like it on both Facebook and YouTube. Armenian language. The Armenian language, classical, reformed, H. J. Renhadiran, is an Indo European language that is the only language in the Armenian branch. It is the official language of Armenia as well as the de facto Republic of Artsakh. Historically being spoken throughout the Armenian highlands, today, Armenian is widely spoken throughout the Armenian diaspora. Armenian is written in its writing system, the Armenian alphabet, introduced in 405 AD by Mesrop Mashtops. History Classification and Origins Armenian is an independent branch of the Indo-European languages. It is of interest to linguists for its distinctive phonological developments within that family. Armenian exhibits more satimization than sentimization, although it is not classified as belonging to either of these subgroups. Some linguists tentatively conclude that Armenian, Greek, Phrygian, and Indo-Iranian were dialectally close to each other. Within this hypothetical dialect group, Proto-Armenian was situated between Proto-Greek, Centum subgroup, and Proto-Indo-Iranian, Chatham subgroup. Others have noted unique morphological developments connecting Armenian to Balto-Slavic languages. Armenia was a monolingual country by the 2nd century BC at the latest. Its language has a long literary history, with a 5th century Bible translation as its oldest surviving text. Its vocabulary has historically been influenced by Western Middle Iranian languages, particularly Parthian, and to a lesser extent by Greek, Persian, and Syriac. There are two standardized modern literary forms, Eastern Armenian and Western Armenian, with which most contemporary dialects are mutually intelligible. Although Armenians were known to history much earlier, for example, for example, they were mentioned in the 6th century BC the Histon inscription, and in Xenophon, 4th century BC history, the Anabasis, comma 31. The oldest surviving Armenian language text is the 5th century AD Bible translation of Mesrop Mashtop, who created the Armenian alphabet in 405, at which time it had 36 letters. He is also credited by some with the creation of the Caucasian Albanian alphabet. While Armenian constitutes the sole member of the Armenian branch of the Indo-European family, some have suggested that the hypothetical Mushki language may have been a, now extinct, Armenia language. Early Contact W.M. Austin, 1942, concluded that there was an early contact between Armenian and Anatolian languages based on what he considered common archaisms, such as the lack of feminine gender and the absence of inherited long vowels. However, unlike shared innovations, or synophomorphy, the common retention of archaisms, or symphysiomorphy, is not considered conclusive evidence of a period.
site of common isolated development. However, there are words used in the Armenian that are generally believed to have been borrowed from Anatolian languages, particularly from Hawaiian, although some have identified possible Hittite loan words as well. In 1985, Soviet linguist Igor M. Dietanov noted the presence in class classical Armenian of what he calls a Caucasian substratum identified by earlier scholars, consisting of loans from the Kartvelian and Northeast Caucasian languages. Noting that Hura Urartian speaking peoples inhabited the Armenian homeland in the second millennium BC, Dietanov identifies in Armenian a Hura Urartian substratum of social, cultural, and animal and plant terms such as Alaskan slave girl, her. Adel, L, A, E, N, C, O, V, C, Urart. Inland, C, U, L, T, Camel, her. Yurtu, and Njur, Apple, Tree, her. Nzuri. Some of the terms he gives admittedly have an Akkadian or Sumerian provenance, but he suggests they were borrowed through Hurrian or Urartian. Given that these Borowinds do not undergo sound changes characteristic of the development of Armenian from Proto-Indo-European, he dates their borrowing to a time before the written record, but after the Proto-Armenian language stage. Loan words from Iranian languages, along with the other ancient accounts such as that of Xenophon above, initially led linguists to erroneously classify Armenian as an Iranian language. Scholars such as Paul de Lagarde and F. Muller believe that the similarities between the two languages meant that Iranian and Armenian were the same language. The distinctness of Armenian was recognized when philologist Heinrich Hubschmann, 1875, used the comparative method to distinguish two layers of Iranian words from the older Armenian vocabulary. He showed that Armenian often had two morphemes for the one concept, and the non-Iranian components yielded a consistent PIE pattern distinct from Iranian, and also demonstrated that the inflectional morphology was different from that in Iranian langu languages. Greco-Armenian Hypothesis the hypothesis that Greek is Armenian's closest living relative originates with Holger Pedersen, 1924, who noted that the number of Greek Armenian lexical cognates is greater than that of agreements between Armenian and any other Indo-European language. Antoine Milet, 1925-1927, further investigated morphological and phonological agreement postulating that the parent languages of Greek and Armenian were dialects in immediate geographical proximity in the Proto-Indo-European period. Milet's hypothesis became popular in the wake of his book S. E. Su, Histoire de la langue latine, 1936. George Renatus Solta, 1960, does not go as far as postulating a Proto-Greco-Armenian stage, but he concludes that considering both the lexicon and morphology, Greek is the dialect most closely related to Armenian. Eric P. Hamp, 1976, 91, supports the Greco-Armenian thesis, anticipating even a time when we should speak of Helleno-Armenian, meaning the postulate of a Greco-Armenian proto-language. Armenian shares the augment and a negator derived from the set phrase Proto-Indo-European language asterisk neh 2 you kid, never anything or always nothing, and the representation of word initial laryngeals by prosthetic vowels, and other phonological and morphological peculiarities with Greek. Nevertheless, as Fortson, 2004, comments, by the time we reach our earliest Armenian records in the 5th century AD, the evidence of any such early kinship has been reduced to a few tantalizing pieces. Many modern scholars have rejected the Greco-Armenian hypothesis, arguing that the linguistic proximity between the two, lang two languages has been overstated. Greco-Armeno-Aryan Hypothesis Greco-Armeno-Aryan is a hypothetical clade within the Indo-European family, ancestral to the Greek language, the Armenian language, and the Indo-Iranian languages. Greco-Aryan unity would have become divided into Proto-Greek and Proto-Indo-Iranian by the mid-3rd millennium BC. Conceivably, Proto-Armenian would have been located between Proto-Greek and Proto-Indo-Iranian, consistent with the fact that Armenian shares certain features only with Indo-Iranian, the Sodom change, but others only with Greek, S greater than H. Greco-Aryan has comparatively wide support among Indo-Europeanists for the Indo-European homeland to be located in the Armenian highlands, the Armenian hypothesis. Early and strong evidence was given by Euler's 1979 examination on shared features in Greek and Sanskrit nominal flexion. Euler's 
linked in tandem with the Greco-Armenian hypothesis, the Armenian language would also be included under the label Ariano greco armenia splitting into Proto-Greek, slash Phrygian, and Armeno-Aryan, ancestor of Armenian and Indo-Iranian. Evolu evolution Classical Armenian, Ar, Graber, attested from the 5th century to the 19th century as the literary standard, up to the 11th century also as a spoken language with different varieties was partially superseded by Middle Armenian, attested from the 12th century to the 18th century. Specialized literature prefers Old Armenian for grabber as a whole, and designates with classical the language used in the 5th century literature, post-classical from the late 5th to 8th century, and late grabber that is the period covering the 8th to 11th century. Later, it was used mainly in religious and specialized literature, except for a revival during the early modern period, when attempts were made to establish it as the language of a literary renaissance, with neoclassical inclinations, through the creation and dissemination of literature in varied genres, especially by the Mekhidrits. The first Armenian periodical, Asarar, was published in Grabber in 1794. The classical form bore of numerous words from Middle Iranian languages, primarily Parthian, and contained smaller inventories of loan words from Greek, Syriac, Arabic, Mongol, Persian, and indigenous languages such as Urartian. An effort to modernize the language in Bagratid Armenia and the Armenian Kingdom of Cilicia, 1114th centuries, resulted in the addition of two more characters to the alphabet, and, bringing the total number to 38. The Book of Lamentations by Gregory of Nereth, 951-1003, is an example of the development of a literature and writing style of Old Ar Armenian by the 10th century. In addition to elevating the literary style and vocabulary of the Armenian language by adding well above a thousand new words. To his other hand and Cohen's Gregory paved the way for his successors to include secular themes and vernacular language in their writings. The thematic shift from mainly religious texts to writings with secular outlook further enhanced and enriched the vocabulary. A Word of Wisdom, a poem by Havana Sarkovac, devoted to a starling, legitimizes poetry devoted to nature, love, or female beauty. Gradually, the interests of the population at large were reflected in other literary works as well. Tom Sidzenyers and Katsi and several others even take the unusual step of criticizing the ecclesiastic establishment and addressing the social issues of the Armenian homeland. However, these changes represented the nature of the literary style and syntax, but they did not constitute immense changes to the fundamentals of the grammar of the morphology of the language. Often, when writers codify a spoken dialect, other language users are then encouraged to imitate that structure through the literary device known as parallelism. In the 19th century, the traditional Armenian homeland was once again divided. This time Eastern Armenia was conquered from Tajar Iran by the Russian Empire, while Western Armenia, containing two-thirds of historical Armenia, remained under Ottoman control. The antagonistic relationship between the Russian and Ottoman empires led to the creation of two separate and different environments under which Armenians lived. Halfway through the 19th century, two important concentrations of Armenian communities were further consolidated. Because of persecutions or the search for better economic opportunities, many Armenians living under Ottoman rule gradually moved to Istanbul, whereas Tbilisi became the center of Armeni Armenians living under Russian rule. These two cosmopolitan cities very soon became the primary poles of Armenian intellectual and cultural life. The introduction of new literary forms and styles, as well as many new ideas sweeping Europe, reached Armenians living in both regions. This created an ever-growing need to elevate the vernacular, Ashkarabar, to the dignity of a modern literary language, in contrast to the now anachronistic grabber. Numerous dialects existed in the traditional Armenian regions, which, different as they were, had certain morphological and phonetic features in common. Based on these features, two major standards emerged. Western Standard the influx of immigrants from different parts of the traditional Armenian homeland to Istanbul crystallized the common elements of the regional dialects, paving the way for a style of writing that required a shorter and more flexible learning curve than grabber. 
Eastern Standard, the Yerevan dialect, provided the primary elements of Eastern Armenian, centered in Tbilisi, Georgia. Simil similar to the Western Armenian variant, the modern Eastern was in many ways more practical and accessible to the masses than Grabber. Both centers vigorously pursued the promotion of Ashkarabar. The proliferation of newspapers in both versions, Eastern and Western, and the development of a network of schools for modern Armenian was taught, dramatically increased the rate of literacy, in spite of the obstacles by the colonial administrators, even in remote rural areas. The emergence of literary work entirely written in the modern version increasingly legitimized the language's existence. By the turn of the 20th century, both varieties of the one modern Armenian language prevailed over Grabber and opened the path to a new and simplified grammatical structure of the language in the two different cultural spheres. Apart from several morphological, phonetic, and grammatical differences, the largely common vocabulary and generally analogous rules of grammatical fundamentals allow users of one variant to understand the other as long as they are fluent in one of the literary standards. After World War I, the existence of the two modern versions of the same language was sanctioned even more clearly. The Armenian Soviet Socialist Republic, 1920-1990, used Eastern Armenian as its official language, whereas the diaspora created after the Armenian Genocide preserved the Western Armenian dialect. Modern Changes the two modern literary dialects, Western, originally associated with writers in the Ottoman Empire, and Eastern, originally associated with writers in the Russian Empire, removed almost all of their Turkish lexical influences in the 20th century, primarily following the Armenian Genocide. Phonology Proto-Indo-European voiceless stop consonants are aspirated in the Proto-Armenian language, one of the circumstances that are often linked to the blood halic theory, a version of which postulated that the voiceless occlusives of Proto-Indo-European were aspira aspirated. Stress In Armenian, the stress falls on the last syllable, unless the last syllable contains the definite article or n, and the possessive article band, in which case it falls on the penultimate one. For instance, I K M D notes D I N I but V H N and D T. Exceptions to this rule are some words with the final letter in the reformed orthography, and sometimes the ordinal numerals, etc., as well as and a small number of other words. Morphology. Armenian corresponds with other Indo-European languages in its structure, but it shares distinctive sounds and features of its grammar with neighboring languages of the Caucasus region. Armenian is rich in combinations of consonants. Both classical Armenian and the modern spoken and literary dialects have a complicated system of noun declension, with six or seven noun cases, but no gender. In modern Armenian, the use of auxiliary verbs to show tense, comparable to will in, he will go, has generally supplemented the inflected verbs of classical Armenian. Negative verbs are conjugated differently from positive ones, as in English, he goes and he does not go, in many tenses, otherwise adding only the negative to the positive conjugation. Grammatically, early forms of Armenian had much in common with classical Greek and Latin, but the modern language, like modern Greek, has undergone many transfer transformations, adding some analytic features. Noun. Classical Armenian has no grammatical gender, not even in the pronouns, but there is a feminine suffix, Puhid. For example, Yerpistich, teacher, becomes Yerpistchahid, female teacher. This suffix, however, does not have a grammatical effect on the sentence. The nominal inflection, however, preserves several types of inherited stem classes. Nouns are declined for one of seven cases, nominative, uxican, accusative, hagakan, locative, nergoikan, genitive, tikan, dative, prokan, ablative, eaciakan, or instrumental, borsiakan. Verbs Verbs in Armenian have an expansive system of conjugation with two main verb types in Eastern Armenian and three in Western Armenian changing form based on tense, mood, and aspect. Dialect Armenian is a pluricentric language, having two modern standardized forms, Eastern Armenian and Western Armenian. The most distinctive feature of Western Armenian is that it has undergone several phonetic mergers, these may be due to proximity to Arabic and Turkish-speaking communities. 
For example, Eastern Armenian speakers pronounce as T, as D, and as a tenuous occlusive T. Western Armenian has simplified the occlusive system into a simple division between voiced occlusives and aspirated ones. The first series corresponds to the tenuous series of Eastern Armenian, and the second corresponds to the Eastern voiced and aspirated series. Thus, the Western dialect pronounces both and as T and the letter as D. There is no precise linguistic border between one dialect and another because there is nearly always a dialect transition zone of some size between pairs of geographically identified dialects. Armenian can be divided into two major dialectal blocks and those blocks into individual dialects, though many of the Western Armenian dialects have become extinct due to the effects of the Armenian Genocide. Besides, neither dialect is completely homogeneous, any dialect can be subdivided into several subdialects. Although Western and Eastern Armenian is often described as different dialects of the same language, many subdialects are not readily mutually intelligible. Nevertheless, a fluent speaker of one of two greatly varying dialects who are also literate in one of the standards, when exposed to the other dialect for a while will be able to understand the other with relative ease. Distinct Western Armenian varieties currently in use include Homshetsi, spoken by the Hemshin people. The dialects of Armenians of Kesef, Latakia, and Jizr al Shadr, Syria, Anjur, Lebanon, and Bakisli, Samandog, Turkey, part of the Swadia dialect. Forms of the Karen dialect of Western Armenian are spoken by several hundred thousand people in northern Armenia, mostly in Jumri, Arden, Akirian, and around 130 villages in Shirak province, 65 and by Armenians in Samski Javakidi province of Georgia, Akalkalaki, a called site. Nakhichev and Andan Armenians speak another Western Armenian variety based on the dialect of Armenians in Crimea, where they came from to establish the town and surrounding villages in 1779. Western Armenian dialects are currently spoken also in Davar, formerly Norbayadek and Kamo, on the west of Lake Sevan, Aparin, and Talin in Armenia, Mush dialect, and by the large Armenian population residing in Abkhazia where they are considered to be the first or second ethnic minority, or even equal in number to the local Abkhaz population. Orthography The Armenian alphabet, Armenian, Romanized, Chaos Rohor or Armenian, Romanized, Chaos Abuban, is a graphically unique alphabetical writing system that is used to write the Armenian language. It was introduced around AD 405 by Mesrop Mashtop, an Armenian linguist and ecclesiastical leader, and originally contained 36 letters. Two more letters, O and F, were added in the Middle Ages. During the 1920s orthography reform in Soviet Armenia, a new letter, capital, was added, which was a ligature, before and, whereas the letter was discarded and reintroduced as part of a new letter, which was a digraph before. This alphabet and associated orthography are used by most Armenian speakers of the Republic of Armenia and the countries of the former Soviet Union. Neither the alphabet nor the orthography has been adopted by diaspora Armenians including Eastern Armenian speakers of Iran and all Western Armenian speakers, who keep using the traditional alphabet and spelling. Indo-European Cognate Armenian is an Indo-European language, so many of its Proto-Indo-European descended words are cognates of words in other Indo-European languages such as English, Latin, Greek, and Sanskrit. Armenian Alphabet The Armenian Alphabet, Armenian, Chaos Grohor or Chaos Abuban, Eastern Armenian, Hajok Sejbuban, Western Armenian, Hajok Sejbukian, is an alphabetic writing system used to write Armenian. It was developed around 405 AD by Mesrop Mashtop, an Armenian linguist and ecclesiastical leader. The system originally had 36 letters, eventually, three more were adopted. The alphabet was also in wide use in the Ottoman Empire around the 18th and 19th centuries. The Armenian word for alphabet is Abuban, named after the first two letters of the Armenian alphabet, Armenian, Ave and Armenian, Ben. Armenian is written horizontally, left to right. Alpha, alphabet. Example, words. Ara, Hega, Hido, Tuti, Yeleg, Fetid, Alaman, Inguit, Cutag, Sham, Ignator, Lorbis, Lo, 
Yahoo, Fervo, Hypopan, Amara, Gaujihiga, Zanabar, Moot, Beat, Not, Evian, EVHMDM, Bomb, Dut AG, Raven, Font, Wella, Pecket, Rum, ESEX, Iped, Eater, Pan, EIRAW, Bob, Possible. Notes. Parrot primarily used in classical orthography, after the reform used word initially, and in some compound words. Parrot except in slash ov, slash who and slash author, slash those, people, in Eastern Armenian. Parrot Iranian Armenians, who speak a sub-branch of Eastern Armenian, pronounce this letter as R, like in classical Armenian. Parrot in classical orthography, and are considered a digraph and, and a ligature, and, respectively. In reformed orthography, they are separate letters of the alphabet. Parrot in reformed orthography, the letter appears only as a component of. In classical orthography, the letter usually represents slash v slash, except in the digraph slash two slash. The spelling reform, in Soviet Armenia, replaced with the tree graph. Parrot except in the present tense of to be, Slash am slash I am, slash yes slash you are, thing, slash and slash we are, slash x slash you are, pl, slash and slash they are. Here the letter is generally used only at the start or end of a word, and so the sound slash slash is unwritten between consonants. Here the ligature has no majuscule form, when capitalized it is written as two letters, classical, or, reformed. Ag, pan, him, tot, yuck. S A E H Y T So Chi Inni Lum Pi Stop Jin H O H Dia Get G Min E Nu Chi Bo Cha Pot Chop Rock S A Vaunt Hyan Rock So You Pure Hey Yon So Say Ligatures Ancient Armenian manuscripts used many ligatures. Some of the commonly used ligatures are and, 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 etc. Armenian print typefaces also include many ligatures. In the new orthography, the character is no longer a typographical ligature, but a distinct letter placed in the new al alphabetic sequence before O. Punctuation. Armenian punctuation marks include. The catheter are used as ordinary quotation marks, and they are placed like French filament, just above the baseline, preferably vertically centered in the middle of the S height of Armenian lowercase letters. The computer-induced use of English-style single or double quotes, vertical, diagonal, or curly forms, placed above the baseline near the M height of uppercase or tall lowercase letters, and at the same level as accents, is strongly discouraged in Armenian as they look too much like other, unrelated, Armenian punctuations. Comma the storicate is used as a comma and placed as in English. The boot, which looks like a comma-shaped reverse apostrophe, is used as a shortstop and placed in the same manner as the semicolon to indicate a part that is longer than that of a comma but shorter than that of a colon. In many texts it is replaced by the single opening single quote, a six-shaped or mirrored nine-shaped or descending wedge-shaped elevated comma or by a space in grave accent. The majacket, whose single dot on the baseline looks like a Latin full stop, is used as an ordinary colon, mainly to separate two closely related, but still independent, clauses, or when a long list of items follows. The vergicat, whose vertically stacked two dots look like a Latin colon, is used as the ordinary full stop, and placed at the end of the sentence. Many texts in Armenian replace the vergicat by the Latin colon as the difference is almost invisible at low resolution for normal text. But the difference may be visible in headings and titles as the dots are often thicker to match the same optical weight as vertical strokes of letters, the dots filling the common X height of Armenian letters. Armenian punctuation marks used inside a word. The yentamna is used as the ordinary Armenian hyphen. The padded was used as an Armenian abbreviation mark and was placed on top of an abbreviated word to indicate that it was abbreviated. It is now obsolete. The apadars are used as a spacing apostrophe, which looks either like a vertical stick or wedge pointing down, or as an elevated nine-shaped comma, or as a small superscript left toe right closing parenthesis or half ring, only in Western Armenian, 
to indicate elision of a vowel, usually slash slash. The following Armenian punctuation mark, placed above and slightly to the right of the vowel, whose tone is modified, to reflect intonation. The Yerkeratsman and Shan, which looks like a diagonally rising tilde, is used as an exclamation mark. The Shesht, which looks like a non-spacing, acute accent, is used as an emphasis mark. The Harsakan and Shan is used like a question mark. History and Development Possible Antecedents One of the classical accounts about the existence of an Armenian alphabet. Before Mashtok comes from Philo of Alexandria, 20 BC, 50 CE, who in his writings notes that the work of the Greek philosopher and historian Metrodorus of Sepsis, CA 145 BC, 70 BC, on animals, was translated into Armenian. Metrodorus was a close friend and a court historian of the Armenian Emperor Bronze the Great and also wrote his biography. A 3rd century Roman theologian, Hippolytus of Rome, 170 to 235 C, in his chronicle, while writing about his contemporary, Emperor Severus Alexander, reigned 208 to 235 C, mentions that the Armenians are amongst those nations who have their distinct alphabet. Philostratus the Athenian, a sophist of the 2nd and 3rd century C, wrote, and they say that a leopardess was once caught in Pamphylia, which was where, wearing a chain around its neck, and the chain was of gold, and on it was inscribed in Armenian lettering, the king Arthasis to the Nisian god. According to the 5th century in Armenian historian Muxes of Koran, Bardasanes of Edessa, 154-222 c, who founded the Gnostic current of the Bardasanites, went to the Armenian castle of Ani and there read the work of a pre-Christian Armenian priest named Vadyam, written in the Mithraic, Median, or Mirian lit of Mir or of Mitra, the Armenian national god of light, truth, and the sun, script of the Armenian temples in which, amongst other histories, an episode was noted of the Armenian king. Tigran VII, reigned from 144 to 161, and again 164 to 186 c, erecting a monument on the tomb of his brother, the Mithraic high priest of the kingdom of Greater Armenia, Mazen. Most of the Koran notes that Bardasanes translated this Armenian book into Syriac, Aramaic, and later also into Greek. Another important evidence for the existence of a pre mashtokshan alphabet is the fact that the Armenian heathen pantheon included Tyr, who was the patron god of writing and science. A 13th century Armenian historian, Bardan Aravelsi, in his history, notes that during the reign of the Armenian king Leo the Magnificent, reigned 1187 to 1219, artifacts were found bearing Armenian inscriptions of the heathen kings of the ancient times. The evidence that the Armenian scholars of the Middle Ages knew about the existence of a pre mashtokshan alphabet can also be found in other medieval works, including the first book composed in Mashtokshan alphabet by the pupil of Mashtok, Korim, in the first half of the 5th century. Korim notes that Mashtok was told of the existence of ancient Armenian letters, which he was initially trying to integrate into his alphabet. Creation by Mashtok the Armenian alphabet was introduced by Metrov Mashtok and Isaac of Armenia, the Hawk Parta, in 405 C. Medieval Armenian sources also claim that Mashtok invented the Georgian and Caucasian Albanian alphabets around the same time. However, most scholars link the creation of the Georgian script to the process of Christianization of Iberia, a core Georgian kingdom of Kartli 10. The alphabet was, therefore, most probably created between the conversion of Iberia under Mirian III, 326 or 337, and the Burel cut inscriptions of 430. Contemporaneously with the Armenian alphabet, Traditionally, the following phrase translated from Solomon's Book of Proverbs is said to be the first sentence to be written down in Armenian by Mashtok. A nail demistician, yet grass, iminal, van tankeroy. No wisdom and instruction to perceive the words of understanding. Book of Proverbs, 1 colon 2. Various scripts have been credited with being the prototype for the Armenian alphabet. Halavi was the priestly script in Armenia before the introduction of Christianity, and Syriac, along with Greek, was one of the alphabets of Christian scripture. Armenian shows some similarities to both. 
However, the consensus is that Armenian is modeled after the Greek alphabet, supplemented with letters from a different source or sources for Armenian sounds not found in Greek. The evidence for this is the Greek order of the Armenian alphabet, the al ligature for the vowel slash u slash, as in Greek, and the shapes of some letters which seem derived from a variety of cursive Greek. It has been speculated by some scholars in African studies, following Dimitri Oldrog, that the GEAZ script influenced certain letter shapes. But this has not been supported by any experts in Armenian studies. There are four principal calligraphic hands of the script. Herkitager, or ironclad letters, seen as Mesrop's original, was used in manuscripts from the 5th to 13th century and is still preferred for epigraphic inscriptions. Mullerberg, or cursive, was invented in the 10th century and became popular in the 13th. It has been the standard printed form since the 16th century. Nogaber, or minuscule, invented initially for speed, was extensively used in the Armenian diaspora in the 16th to 18th century, and later became popular in printing. Chegajir, or slanted writing, is now the most common form. The earliest known example of the script's usage was a dedicatory inscription over the west door of the Church of St. Sargas in Tikar. Based on the known individuals mentioned in the inscription, it has been dated to the 480s. The earliest known surviving example of usage outside of Armenia is a mid-6th century mosaic inscription in the chapel of St. Polyaptos in Jerusalem. A papyrus discovered in 1892 at Bayum and containing Greek words written in Armenian script has been dated on historical grounds to before the Arab conquest of Egypt, i.e. before 640, and on paleographic grounds to the 6th century and perhaps even the late 5th century. It is now in the Bibliothèque Nationale de France, France. The earliest surviving manuscripts were written in Armenian using Armenian script date from the 7th to 8th century. Certain shifts in the language were at first not reflected in the orthography. The digraph, though, followed by a consonant used to be pronounced though, as in luout, in classical Armenian, but due to a sound shift it came to be pronounced on and has since the 13th century been written, oh. For example, classical, or, or, say, became pronounced or and is now written, or. One word has kept off, now pronounced slash av slash, pigeon. And there are a few proper names still having a before a consonant, Taurus, Faustus, etc. For this reason, today native Armenian words are beginning with the letter, O, although this letter was taken from the Greek alphabet to write foreign words beginning with OO. The number and order of the letters have changed over time. In the Middle Ages, two new letters, O, F, were introduced to better represent foreign sounds. This increased the number of letters from 36 to 38. From 1922 to 1924, Soviet Armenia adopted a reformed spelling of the Armenian language. The reform changed the digraph and the ligature into two new letters, but it generally did not change the pronunciation of individual letters. That outside of the Soviet sphere, including all Western Armenians as well as Eastern Armenians in Iran, has rejected the reformed spelling and continue to use the traditional Armenian orthography. They criticize some aspects of the reform, the reforms, See the footnotes of the chart, and allege political motives behind them. Use for other languages For about 250 years, from the early 18th century until around 1950, more than 2,000 books in the Turkish language were printed using the Armenian alphabet. Not only did Armenians read this Turkish in Armenian script, so did the non-Armenian, including the Ottoman Turkish, elite. An American correspondent in Marash in 1864 called the alphabet Armena Turkish, describing it as consisting of 31 Armenian letters and infinitely superior to the Arabic or Greek alphabets for rendering Turkish. This Armenian script was used alongside the Arabic script on official documents of the Ottoman Empire written in Ottoman Turkish. For instance, the first novel to be written in Turkish in the Ottoman Empire was Barton Pasha's 1851 Akabi Hikayasai, written in the Armenian script. When the Armenian Dizian family managed the Ottoman Mint during the reign of Abdulmadadai, they kept records in Armenian script but the Turkish language. 
From the middle of the 19th century, the Armenian alphabet was also used for books written in the Kurdish language in the Ottoman Empire. The Armenian script was also used by Turkish-speaking, assimilated Armenians between the 1840s and 1890s. Constantinople was the main center of Armenian scripted Turkish press. This portion of the Armenian press declined in the early 20th century, but continued until the Armenian Genocide of 1915. In areas inhabited by both Armenians and Assyrians, Syriac texts were occasionally written in the Armenian script, although the opposite phenomenon, Armenian texts, are written in Serto, the Western Syriac script is more common. The Kipchak-speaking Armenian Christians of Sedolia and Galicia used an Armenian alphabet to produce an extensive amount of literature between 1524 and 1669. The Armenian script, along with the Georgian, was used by the poet Syat Nova in his Armenian poems. An Armenian alphabet was an official script for the Kurdish language in 1921-1928 in Soviet Armenia. Character encoding the Armenian alphabet was added to the Unicode standard in version 1.0, in October 1991. It is assigned the range U plus 053008F. Five Armenian ligatures are encoded in the alphabetic presentation forms block, code point range U and FB13 FB17. On June 15, 2011, the Unicode Technical Committee, UTC, accepted the Armenian DRAM sign for inclusion in the future versions of the Unicode standard and assigned a code for the sign, U plus 058F, Armenian DRAM. In 2012 the sign was finally adopted in the Armenian block of ISO and Unicode International Standards. The Armenian Eternity Sign since 2013, a designated point in Unicode U plus 058D, right-facing Armenian Eternity Sign, and another for its left-facing variant, U plus 058D, left-facing Armenian Eternity Sign. Legacy Armestii Armestii is a character encoding developed between 1991 and 1999. Armestii was popular on the Windows 9 X operating system. With the development of the Unicode standard and its availability on modern operating systems, it has been rendered obsolete. Arison Compatible Arison Compatible fonts are based on the encoding of the original Arisan fonts by Hrant Papadian. He started encoding in use since 1986, which simply replaces the Latin characters, among others, of the ASCII encoding with Armenian ones. For example, the ASCII code for the Latin character A, 65, represents the Armenian character. While errors and compatible fonts were popular among many users on Windows 9F, the encoding has been deprecated by the Unicode standard. This is brought to you by the strange, the bizarre, the unusual. I like it. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please like, subscribe, share, make comments. We love feedback. Thank <laughs> you.